Did you know that Alice Cooper once woke up vomiting blood? It was 1983, and this shocking moment became the turning point in his life. But why was he in such bad shape? And how did he go from this rock bottom to becoming a sober, respected rock legend? We're going to take you behind the scenes of Alice Cooper's darkest days and his amazing comeback. You'll see how he fought his demons and came out on top, all while keeping his famous spooky rock image. It's a story of second chances that might just change how you think about your own life. The Rise of Alice Cooper Vincent Fernier, born in Detroit to a pastor father, grew up in a deeply religious household. He sang in the church choir and attended services regularly. But as he entered his teenage years, a rebellious streak began to emerge, setting the stage for a dramatic transformation. In high school, Vincent formed a band called The Spiders with some friends, covering popular rock songs. Realizing they needed something more to stand out, Vincent conceived the character of Alice Cooper, a shocking, boundary-pushing persona that would become his alter ego. The contrast between Vincent's upbringing and his new stage persona was jarring. The once clean-cut choir boy was now pretending to be executed on stage, a complete departure from his former life. This radical shift didn't come without its challenges. In the early days, Alice Cooper, the band, faced constant rejection. Record labels were baffled by their wild shows and bizarre image. Too unconventional for mainstream audiences, yet not quite fitting into the underground scene, the band struggled financially, often subsisting on a single can of beans a day. Despite these hardships, Vincent, now fully embracing the Alice Cooper character, persevered. He believed in their unique potential to shake up the music world. His intuition proved correct. Alice Cooper, with his smeared makeup, wild hair, and androgynous clothing, was unlike anything the public had seen before. Their breakthrough came with the 1970 hit, I'm 18. Suddenly, Alice Cooper was everywhere. Their shocking stage shows, complete with fake blood, electric chairs, and live snakes, became legendary. Parents' horror only fueled the younger generation's adoration. This transformation, however, came at a significant personal cost. As Vincent spent more time as Alice, the boundaries between character and man began to blur. He turned to alcohol, using it as a crutch to shed his shy religious self and embody the monstrous Alice persona on stage. Alice Cooper quickly rose to fame, topping charts and selling out arenas. But behind the scenes, Vincent grappled with the overwhelming pressure of maintaining his alter ego. He felt as if he was losing his true self to the character he'd created. With success came not only fame, but also addiction, isolation, and a growing sense of emptiness. The once devout pastor's son had become the godfather of shock rock, spiraling into a dark and damaging cycle that threatened to consume him entirely. Descent into addiction. While Alice Cooper's stage performances shocked audiences, a far more dangerous drama was playing out behind the scenes. What pushed this rock legend to the brink of destruction? The relentless demands of stardom took a heavy toll on Alice Cooper. Night after night, he'd transform into his wild stage persona, pushing the boundaries of shock rock. But when the lights went down and the makeup came off, Vincent Fernier was left feeling hollow and isolated. To cope, Cooper turned to alcohol. What began as a way to embody his alter ego and loosen up before shows quickly spiraled into a dangerous habit. He'd drink to numb the pain and forget the pressure. Soon, he was drinking just to function. Cooper once admitted, I was drinking a bottle of whiskey a day. I was throwing up blood in the morning. As his addiction deepened, Cooper's life began to unravel. His performances became unpredictable, some nights electrifying, others a stumbling mess. His marriage to Cheryl Goddard, whom he wed in 1976, was crumbling. 
The man who could command thousands of screaming fans couldn't keep his personal life from falling apart. Friends and family watched helplessly as Cooper sank deeper into his addiction. By the early 1980s, Cooper was trapped in a downward spiral that seemed inescapable. He was drinking constantly, even waking up in the middle of the night to have a drink. His health was failing and his career was hanging by a thread. The shock rocker who once ruled the charts was now a shadow of his former self. Then came the wake-up call that would change everything. In 1983, Cooper woke up vomiting blood. He was rushed to the hospital, where doctors delivered a grim ultimatum. Quit drinking or die. The man who had played with death on stage was now facing it in real life. It was a moment of brutal clarity for Cooper. He realized that if he didn't change, he would die. The turning point. As Cooper lay in that hospital bed, his life hanging by a thread, a question echoed in his mind. Was this how the Prince of Darkness would meet his end? Little did he know, this brush with death would lead to an unexpected spiritual awakening that would challenge everything he thought he knew about himself. The harsh reality of his situation hit Cooper hard. He was Alice Cooper, the shock rock icon, now facing his own mortality. The doctor's ultimatum was clear, change or die. It was a wake-up call that shook him to his core. For Cooper, admitting he needed help was perhaps the hardest performance of his life. He'd spent years cultivating an image of invincibility, but now he had to confront his powerlessness over alcohol. It was a bitter truth, but one he couldn't ignore any longer. His first attempts at recovery were rocky, Cooper checked himself into rehab, trading his stage costume for a hospital gown. The withdrawal symptoms were brutal, leaving him shaking and sick. Without alcohol to numb his feelings, Cooper was forced to face the person he'd become. Early sobriety brought its own set of challenges. Cooper struggled with insomnia, often lying awake at night, haunted by memories of his past excesses. He battled intense cravings, his body screaming for the alcohol he'd denied it. The temptation to give up and return to his old ways was constant. But what was the key to Cooper's transformation? The answer came from an unexpected source. Cooper, the man who'd made a career out of shocking people, found solace in his childhood faith. He rediscovered Christianity finding strength in the very beliefs he'd once rebelled against. This spiritual awakening gave Cooper a new perspective on his life and career. He began to see his talent as a gift, not just a means to fame and fortune. Cooper started attending church regularly, even joining a Bible study group. The man who once bit the heads off chickens on stage was now finding peace in prayer and scripture. Cooper's faith became his anchor in the stormy seas of recovery. It provided him with a sense of purpose beyond the next album or tour. He began to see his survival as a second chance, an opportunity to use his influence for good. Faith and rock and roll. Cooper's journey to redemption took an unexpected turn. Just as he thought he'd found his footing, he was confronted with a choice that would test his newfound convictions. As Cooper embraced his faith, he grappled with reconciling his shock rock icon status with his Christian beliefs. The contrast between his wild stage persona and the teachings of love, forgiveness, and humility seemed irreconcilable. Cooper briefly considered abandoning the Alice character altogether, but something felt off about that decision. Seeking guidance, Cooper turned to his pastor their conversations led to a surprising revelation. Perhaps God had given him the Alice Cooper persona for a purpose. This idea transformed Cooper's perspective, allowing him to see his music and performances in a new light. He realized he could use shock and spectacle to tell stories of redemption and hope. However, this shift wasn't without its challenges. Many fans worried that a Christian Alice Cooper would lose his edge. Cooper had to prove 
he could maintain his theatrical, shocking performances while living a life of faith offstage. In interviews, Cooper began speaking openly about his beliefs, discussing how faith had saved him from alcoholism and given him a new lease on life. He assured fans that Alice Cooper, the shock rocker, wasn't going anywhere. I'm still going to be Alice, he said. I'm just going to be Alice with a conscience. This new chapter sparked some of Cooper's most creative work. He delved into deeper themes, exploring ideas of good and evil, temptation and redemption. His shows remained spectacular and shocking, but now carried an underlying message of hope beneath the horror. Cooper's journey demonstrated that faith and rock and roll could coexist, even when it seemed impossible. He didn't lose his edge to find his faith. Instead, he used his unique platform to reach people, bringing light to the darkness he once embraced. Staying sober in rock and roll. While Cooper had found a way to merge his faith with his stage presence, staying sober in the world of rock and roll seemed like an impossible task. As he stepped back into the spotlight, a sobered up Alice Cooper faced his toughest audience yet, his own industry. The music world presented a minefield of challenges for the newly sober Cooper. His peers were skeptical at first, unable to imagine the shock rocker without his signature bottle of whiskey. Some even tried to tempt him back to his old ways, not believing his change was genuine. Determined to maintain his sobriety, Cooper developed a set of strategies. He replaced his pre-show drink ritual with a workout routine, channeling nervous energy into physical exercise. He surrounded himself with a supportive crew who respected his choice and kept busy when not performing. Golf became Cooper's unexpected ally in recovery. This hobby not only kept him away from temptation, but also helped him build new, sober friendships outside the music industry. People would say, "Ah, oh, come on, just have one drink, Cooper recalled in an interview. They didn't understand that for me, one drink was never enough. Cooper's performances underwent a transformation as well. Without alcohol to dull his senses, he found himself more present and energetic on stage. The theatrical elements of his shows became even more elaborate and precise. Fans and critics alike noticed the difference, with many commenting that the sober Alice Cooper was more shocking and entertaining than ever before. Contrary to fears that sobriety would rob him of creativity, Cooper found it enhanced his artistic output. With a clear mind, he wrote some of the most powerful and meaningful music of his career. Albums like The Last Temptation tackled complex themes of morality and redemption, showcasing a depth that surprised many listeners. Cooper's journey proved that rock and sobriety could not only coexist, but thrive together. He showed that the edge and rebellion of rock and roll didn't come from a bottle, but from within. His commitment to staying sober in an industry rife with temptation became as legendary as his stage antics. Giving back. Alice Cooper had conquered his demons, but now faced a different kind of challenge. How could a man known for fake blood and horror shows become a beacon of hope? Cooper's next chapter would test the limits of his transformation in ways no one saw coming. As Cooper emerged from the depths of addiction, he found himself driven by a new purpose. The rocker who once reveled in controversy now felt compelled to help others battling the same demons he'd faced. But becoming a respected mentor wasn't going to be easy. Many doubted if the man behind provocative songs could really be taken seriously as a role model. Cooper's initial steps into this new role were cautious. He began by reaching out to fellow musicians struggling with addiction, offering a unique perspective from someone who'd been there. In interviews, Cooper spoke openly about his experiences, hoping his story might inspire others to seek help. His ambitions expanded beyond just helping other rockers. 
Cooper wanted to make a difference in the lives of young people before they fell into the trap of addiction. This led to the creation of the Solid Rock Foundation in 1995. The organization provided a safe, engaging environment for teens to explore their creativity and build self-esteem through programs in music, dance, art, and even culinary skills. Cooper's involvement in the foundation was hands-on. He often spent time with the teens, sharing his experiences and offering encouragement. For many young people, meeting Alice Cooper was exciting enough, but to have him take a genuine interest in their lives was truly good transformative. The impact of Cooper's work began to ripple out. He became a sought-after speaker at recovery events, his journey from addiction to sobriety resonating with people from all walks of life. The man once known for shocking parents was now earning their respect and gratitude. Surprisingly, Cooper found that his work in recovery and youth outreach enhanced his music career. Fans saw a depth and authenticity in his performances that went beyond the theatrics. His songs took on new meanings, with themes of struggle and redemption resonating more strongly than ever. Legacy Redefined Cooper's transformation from Rock's villain to an unlikely hero was just beginning. What happened next would test not only his resolve, but the very essence of his public persona. Could the man behind the makeup maintain his edge while becoming a force for good? As Alice Cooper entered the twilight of his career, he faced a new challenge, redefining his legacy. Once viewed as a menace corrupting youth with theatrical antics and dark themes, Cooper's journey from addiction to advocacy changed the way the world saw him. News of his sobriety and charitable work spread, and people began to see Cooper as a survivor who had faced his demons and come out stronger. Cooper now approaches his music and faith with a unique balance. He still dons the makeup and performs his classic shock rock shows, but there's a deeper meaning behind the spectacle. His lyrics explore themes of temptation, redemption, and the human struggle between good and evil. In interviews, Cooper speaks openly about how his faith informs his art, using his platform to share messages of hope and recovery. Cooper's influence extends far beyond rock music. In recovery communities, he's seen as a beacon of hope, proving that even those in the depths of addiction can turn their lives around. His Solid Rock Foundation continues to impact young lives, providing a safe space for teens to explore their creativity and build self-esteem. The question of Cooper's true legacy has followed him throughout his later career. Is it the music, the shocking performances, or the lives he's helped change? Cooper himself has expressed hope that he'll be remembered not just as a rock star, but as someone who used his fame to make a positive difference in the world. Cooper's transformation stands as a powerful testament to the strength of human will and the possibility of change. From the depths of alcoholism to the heights of charitable work, his journey proves that it's never too late to rewrite your story. The man who once shocked the world with fake executions now inspires with real-life resurrection. Alice Cooper's journey from rock bottom to redemption showcases the resilience of the human spirit. His transformation from shock rocker to sober advocate demonstrates how our darkest moments can lead to meaningful change. Cooper's struggles with addiction ultimately led to his work in helping others overcome similar battles. His story serves as a reminder that personal growth can emerge from life's toughest challenges. Beyond his music and wild performances, Cooper's impact extends to the lives he's touched through his advocacy work. His journey illustrates that change is possible, even when the odds seem stacked against us. Cooper's legacy now encompasses both his artistic contributions and his role in supporting those grappling with addiction.
offering a beacon of hope to many.